Welcome to the next session. Today we're going to be looking at musculoskeletal x-ray interpretation. We're going to go through a systematic structure for identifying any abnormalities or findings on musculoskeletal x-rays. So to start with, let's have a look at step one. First thing is we're going to identify that we have the correct patient and the correct x-ray. And this can be done by looking for three points of identification on the x-ray. This includes the name of the patient, the date of birth and the hospital number, as well as that we have the correct image for that patient, as they may have multiple images on our x-ray system. Once we've done that, we then need to have a look at which part of the bone and which bone is fractured, as well as the type of fracture. So in step two, we need to first identify the bone. As we can see here, we've got the right femur drawn. Let's have a look at the different areas of the bone and then what type of fracture patterns we can get. So the first thing is a bone, especially a long bone, will have a long tubular area in the middle. And this is known as the diaphysis or the shaft. The bit at the end of the bone, which can make up part of the joint, is known as the epiphysis. The bit between the epiphysis and the tubular cortical part of the bone is known as the metaphysis. Now, in skeletally immature patients, those that are children, they will also have a transverse lucent area close to or between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. And this is the growth plate. This is termed the physis. It's a lucent area because it's composed of um, collagenous and cartilaginous um, tissue rather than calcified um, tissue. So once we've identified which part of the bone that we have our fracture in or abnormality, we then need to have a look at what type of fracture pattern we have or what type of break. And these can be various different types. We may have what's called a transverse fracture. That's a horizontal type fracture. Other fracture patterns include oblique fractures. So these are at an angle to the horizontal plane. Now they may be short oblique or certain fracture patterns may be longer like this. So that's a long oblique fracture. If there's more than one fracture in the same place or same part of the bone, this may be termed multifragmentary or comminuted. And similarly, if we have fractures in the same bone at different areas of the bone, so for example, we may have a fracture over here and a fracture over here, this is termed a segmental fracture. So we can get various different fracture patterns as well as knowing which part of the bone that is fractured. Once we've identified the bone, the type of fracture we have, we now need to describe the two ends or more than two ends of fractured bone and how they relate to each other in terms of the length, rotation and alignment of the bone. And this is the next step. So this can be remembered by the anagram star. As we see over here, the S stands for shortening and this looks at how the two bone ends are related to each other. As you can see over here, we have a mid diaphyseal fracture, which is transverse in nature and the two ends of the bones are shortened, or the overall length of the bone is shortened. And this is most often the case, because when two bones, when the bone fractures into two, there are muscles which cross that fracture, and these contract, causing shortening of the bone ends. Now, you can see this as overlapping on the x-ray, and overall reduction in the length of the bone.
This can be described as mild shortening, no shortening or severe shortening depending on the type. And this could be described here as some moderate shortening. Moving on to T, this looks at translation of the bone ends. Conventionally, for translation and angulation, it's described in relation to what the distal fragment is doing compared to the proximal. So in this case, we can see that we have the fracture over here, again, a mid-shaft transverse fracture. The distal fractured end has moved, if this is medial and this is lateral, it has moved medial in relation to the proximal end. Therefore, this is medial translation of the fracture. It can also be described in terms of percentages. If there is no overlap between the fractured bone ends, then this is described as 100% translation, and it can be described as 50%, 25%, or so on. If there's 100% or more translation, it can also be termed an off-ended fracture. So this is an off-ended fracture laterally in relation to the proximal fractured end and this bone, distal bone in black over here is roughly about 50 to 75% medially translated. Now once we've looked at the shortening and the translation we need to move on to assessing angulation of the fracture. And similarly to translation we describe what the distal fractured part of the bone is doing in relation to the proximal part. So over here we see we've got the distal part of the bone, again if this is medial and this is lateral, the distal end is translated, is angulated medially in relation to the proximal end. You can also describe the point of the bone, so as you can see over here whenever there's angulation there's always an apex or a point of the bone. We can see the apex here is lateral. So, for ease of description, I would say that this is a medially angulated fracture. Finally, the last thing we need to assess is R, for rotation. And this is difficult to do on 2D imaging, and sometimes can't be commented on. But in this case, we can see that we have the proximal fractured end, which is looking like an anterior-posterior AP image, the distal fractured end, which is how we would see the femoral condyle in this case on a lateral image. So if we look over here, if we look from here at the, at the distal end of the femur on laterally, we would see what looks like this. So for us to be seeing an AP image and a lateral image of the same bone, the distal end of the fracture must have rotated. Now, so this would be a rotated fracture. And it can be sometimes difficult to comment on, as uh, stated. So once we've done this, we've ensured we have the correct patient, with the correct details and the correct image. We've identified which bone and what fracture pattern we have. And we've described the two fractured ends of the bones, how they relate to each other. We can clearly summarise our findings. So let's have a look at our first x-ray. Step one is to ensure we have the correct patient and the correct details. These aren't visible on this x-ray, but we would have checked this. Step two is to identify the bone that is visible, and we can see a tibia and a fibula left-sided. Step three is to identify the fracture pattern and where in the bone the fracture is happening. So this is a left comminuted mid diaphyseal tibial fracture and a left segmental fibular fracture, as you can see two fractures along the fibula in separate parts of the fibula. Step four is to identify and describe how the fracture ends relate to each other. So we can see that we have some shortening of the tibia as there's some overlap of the bone ends as well as of the fibula. We have translation medially of the distal fractured end of the tibia and this is 100% translated, as well as uh, anterior translation, as we can see on the lateral film. We have angulation of the tibia laterally, of the distal tibial end, as well as of the fibula. And it's difficult to assess rotation on this view, although it doesn't look to be grossly rotated, as we can see the knee joint and the ankle joint in AP. So, to summarise, this is a left-sided, tibia fibula fracture 
mid-diaphyseal comminuted tibia fracture with a segmental fibula fracture with some shortening, 100% translation, lateral angulation, and it's difficult to comment on the rotation. Let's move on to our next x-ray. For interest of time, let's say we've gone through the details of the patient. This is a mid-shaft transverse humeral fracture on the right side with some shortening translation of 100% or an off-ended fracture, angulation medially and difficult to comment on the rotation. And finally, let's have a look at this x-ray. Again, let's say for interest of time that we looked at the um, details of the patient to ensure we have the correct x-ray and the correct patient. This shows a distal radius transverse fracture with some shortening, as you can see, overlap of the distal radius uh, fractured ends with the proximal part of the fracture as well in the lateral view. Minimal translation or dorsal translation, uh, dorsal angulation, and difficult to comment on rotation, although it doesn't seem to be uh, any uh, severe rotation. So to clarify, this is a distal radius fracture of the left wrist with shortening, some translation dorsally, dorsal angulation, and minimal rotation. I hope you found that useful. Please let me know if you have any other ideas for um, teaching topics you'd like me to cover. And please feel free to subscribe and comment on my Instagram. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much.